Hello, I'm Matthew Mitchell, convener for Introduction to Programming. And what we're going to do now is just look at using arrays and loops, and also a little bit of uh, functional decomposition. So first thing is I'll just save this file. All right, so we'll go to main. And what we want to do in this main is create an array. So I'm going to call the array list. And a simple way to do that is just to put an empty array in the code there. And then what I want to do is use a loop to go through and ask the user to enter some names and put them in the list. So I'm going to create a control variable for the loop, which I call index, set that to zero. I'm going to give a maximum number of things for the list, which I'm going to set to 10. And then I'm going to uh, have the while loop, and I'm going to say while the index is less than the size, which is count, then I'm going to ask the user to enter a name. So I'm going to go put string, okay, oh, please enter an element. I'll call it, which is a correct terminology for a list. And then I'll go element equals get string. Well, actually I can I can do I can do it two ways. I can do element equals get string, and then I can go uh, list index equals element. I can do that. So I read in the element, or I can just directly, um, sorry. Now this is an empty list, yep. So there's no space in it. So I need to actually create space in the list. And I, so I use that double backwards arrow to do that. So you can do this in Ruby. That automatically creates space for uh, a, another element in the list uh, so that the array can grow dynamically if you like to include new elements so so I can do it that way that's that's kind of two steps but we can do that directly we can go list get string that's probably the way to, the best way to do it so that will automatically take what we read in and append it to the list all right so so we read in the element uh, we add it to the list now this is the important thing we need to in in increment our control variable. So I can go index equals index plus one. That's one way of doing it. Or a shorthand way is index plus equals one. That's the same thing. All right, and then we end the then we end the loop. So what I've got here is a loop that will go through ten times. And oh, sorry, get rid of this. Go through ten times and add in ten things to the element, and then stop. What I'd like to do though is maybe just put out what we added. Okay, added plus. Now I want to get the thing we just got from the list, so I use this um, ref this these square brackets to tell. The system that I want to get something out of the list and I tell it what position I want to get it from. So in this case it's a position I just added. So the first thing we put in will go into index position zero. So the first time we come through this, oh hang on, we need to do that before this. Otherwise we'll be grabbing something past the end of the list. So I, I prompt to enter an element, I add that element to the list. So the first time we do this, that'll be element zero. And index, of course, will be zero. So I say added, and then I print out what is in the list at index zero, position zero. Arrays start from zero and go up to um, nine in this case. So that will have 10 elements, but we count from zero rather than one. All right, so now we have a little loop that goes through and simply puts things into the list 
increasing the size of the list each time and print them out before adding one to index and going around and putting the next thing in. So the index is using serving two purposes here. One is it lets me print out what we just added, but the main purpose here is that it controls, oops, it controls the loop. So once index gets to um, count, gets to 10, um, it should stop. Yep. So let's just run that now. So we go Ruby array demo. Please enter an element. Matt added Matt, Fred, Sam, Jill, Jenny, John, Jack, Lil, um, Bill, Ben. All right. So that worked, and we added all those elements. But it's a bit hard for me to see all of them. So maybe I want to add something here, and I'll make this another uh, another procedure, where I'll go print elements. I want to just print them out. I want to give that the list. So this is a bit of functional, a, a small example of functional decomposition. I don't want to crowd up main with all the code for going through and printing the elements. In fact, I could probably take this out of main and put it somewhere else, which would be, you know, read in elements. But for now, I just want to do something that's going to be print elements. So I need to define another procedure. It's a procedure because it doesn't return anything. We're just calling it for the side effect of printing things out. I pass in the list as a parameter. All right, so now I need here another loop. So now I need, if I have a loop, I need a control variable, index equals zero. I go while index is less than list dot size. So I can ask the list how big it is. So I don't have to pass in the size of the list here. I can ask the list how big it is. It's um, and then I just want to print out each thing. So I go put string. Now here I can put in the index element is, and then I can go list index. So this is a way of embedding a number into the put string, and it'll take whatever the value of index is and and print it out. So, and then of course we need to increment index. So it goes up by one each time. And maybe I just want to put a little bit of information here. Put string, you know. Printing list. So that's our print elements. That should then, after we've entered everything, this should call print elements, pass in at the list, and we should go through and we should be printing out everything in the list. So let's see how that goes. Run our program again. So I go Matt, Fred, Sam, Jill, Lil, John, Bill, um, Ben. Jenny, Jack, right, and then it prints out the list. So we get element zero, element one, element two, up to nine. So there's 10 elements, but we start counting from zero up to nine. That's the way arrays work. So that's a quick introduction to arrays and loops, and, uh, and also a little bit of functional decomposition, whereby we create a procedure there and get it out of main. Perhaps ideally what I would do would be to, to take this a uh, whole bit of code here and I would also put that in its own little function I'll just call it read list um, paste that in there so that gives us all the elements there and, but what I want to do here is return list so return list means this is a function and it's going to give back the list to whoever calls this. And, and the function, or the function it's gonna call this, or procedure it's gonna call this is main. So we're gonna go list equals, what did I call it? Read list. All right. And so that's gonna call the function read list, which will give us back the list, and then I'll print it. Now this is a better main because it has less complexity. It's more of a manager. And managers should not be doing 
you know, bottom level work. We should be pushing that work down to subordinates. So in this case, I've created a subordinate called read list and I've shoved all that code down into there. All right, and so now main is just coordinating these two, uh, this function and this procedure. So let's see if that works. Let's see if it works the same as it did. So we go Matt, Fred, Sam, Jenny, Jill, John, Lil, Ben, uh, Jack, Sue. Okay, so it still works the same as before, only we've changed the design of the program. So there we go, we've looked at arrays, loops, and functional decomposition. Thanks for that.